We are going to compare the top of the line one man flip overs from Eskimo, Otter, and Clam in today's video. We are gonna compare the specs, features, and unique traits of each of the three and rank them in today's video to hopefully help you choose which one's gonna be best for you. At the end of the video, I'll tell you which one I choose for me that I'm gonna be using this ice season and a handy comparison sheet that gives you all of the things that we talked about in the video as a nice reference. I have no affiliation with any of these companies. I bought all of these with my own money just like you would. So you can expect today to be unbiased advice. Let's jump in. The Eskimo Wide 1 XR Thermal is $599.99 plus $155 in accessories to make it comparable to the Clam, which gets you to $755 if you want to look at an apples to apples comparison. The Clam is $929.99. You can also get it without those accessories for $829.99. And then the Otter XT Hideout is $599.99 and you can get it uh, with the accessories making it comparable to the Clam for an extra $145, bringing it to $744.96. Having just pulled these three shacks out here, here in anywhere from six inches to two feet of snow into my backyard here on a super crazy windy day. This is what I'll tell you about them. Which one pulled the easiest? Believe it or not, it's actually the Eskimo. The Eskimo shack just glided across the top of the snow completely effortlessly. It was significantly different than the next one, which was the Otter. The Otter was noticeably heavier and harder to pull. The clam was the hardest to pull out in the snow and I think that is because of the extra weight that it has on it, significantly more than the other two. If you are looking to pull these shacks out with an ATV or a snowmobile, I will tell you this, they all have a tow bar accessory that hooks up to the front of it instead of the rope. The one thing that I will tell you is the Eskimo shack and the Otter shack have a flip over tow bar, which I'll picture here on the screen. So you don't need to disconnect it when you put it in your truck. Whereas the clam, while it's not too hard to disconnect if you get their pro model, it is still a pain and you can't just flip it over your shack. That is another pro for the Otter and the Eskimo. As for dimensions, we'll start out with what they are collapsed size. The Eskimo is 21 inches tall with the seat underneath that cover there, 36 inches wide and 57 inches long. The Otter Shack comes in at 17 inches in height, so a lot shorter. Uh, 38 inches wide and 58 inches long. And the Clam Shack comes in at 25 inches tall, 46 inches wide and only 57 inches long. Now, let's go ahead and unpack each of them and see how quickly we can get them set up. And just like that, we've got them all set up. The one thing I'll call out about the setup process is the Eskimo, you've gotta make sure that you've got the flap just right to get that side bar in the front extended. The clam goes up and extends really easily, and the Otter's a true one flip, so that's super easy. Throw the seat in and you're done. They're all very easy to set up. First thing you're probably gonna notice is how tall the clam looks. That's not an optical illusion. The ground is a little bit higher over there, but that shack is significantly taller. You'll notice here once we get into the dimensions. Let's start with a walk around to each of the shacks. This is the Clam X100 Pro Thermal XT. On each side here, what we've got is a really nice blue color on them. You've got one window on each side. You've got a vent above the windows that you can see there. On the front, you've got a nice big wide door. You're gonna see how tall the shack is. This is the tallest of the three shacks that we're comparing here today. You do have a window in the front as well. And then the other side is the same as the one that we just looked at where you've got the vent and you've got a window. And then the back of the shack is just blue. You've got your license plate holder that you can slip your license in here if you're camping out on the ice overnight or if you need it in your state. And then a big window in the back as well. Otter XT hideout. So you're gonna notice here a little bit skinnier door, a little bit smaller footprint, not nearly as tall as the clam that we just walked through. On the side here, you've got a window uh, with some logo and branding, some really nice color branding on the sides. They all look like really nice shack. That window up front. The other side here, we've got a spot to put your license in if you want to. You've got a vent there, you've got a window. 
And then on the back here, you've got a reflector, you've got your nice window in the back here, and then it just goes down to the sled at the bottom. And the Eskimo Wide 1 XR walk around here on the front, what we're gonna see is that super wide base. That is the special unique feature on this guy, which you're gonna notice when we get inside as well. Then you've also got a pretty cool front window here that we'll see, lots of branding on the front and a couple of reflectors. On the right hand side, what you're gonna see, I hung this up here, it is an optional thing that comes with it. It's just got a little clip on it if you want to take it off, but this is a little holder here for your license if you're going to leave it on the lake or if you need it in your state. And then we've got just red and black branding, pretty straightforward here. Nice wide window, which I kind of like. It's not very tall, but it is wide, which is kind of nice for that extra uh, side to side visibility branding. And then on the back here, we have got no window. No window. What the heck, Eskimo? But there's no window on the back. You've got a couple of reflectors. And then the vent, the vent is on the top. This is a black top. You've got a black vent here uh, that comes out of the top. So I guess, you know, roof vent is what you got there. Black on the front here that you'll see on the front top as well. And then the left side is the same as the other side, exactly the same. You've got a window and then you've got the side of the shack. In terms of setup dimensions, we're looking at 80 inches tall. We've got 42 inches in width of the shack and a total of 109 inches in length when it's fully set up. As for the setup dimensions of the shack, we have a 60 inch height up here in the front. We've got a 39 inch width on the shack and a length of 108 inches. As far as dimensions, you've got a top height of 64.5 inches. That's right there in the middle. In terms of width, you're looking at 58 inches wide, thanks to that wide front end on this guy here. And then in terms of overall length, you're looking at 102 inches in length from front to back, fully set up. In terms of setup dimensions, this is the largest shack of the three. In terms of fishable area, we've got 14 square feet of square footage here, which is 40 inches wide by 51 inches long. For fishable area in the otter, we've got the smallest 12.6 square feet, 35 inches wide and 52 inches long. Fishable square footage in area. It is the most out of the one man shacks with 17 and a half square feet. We're looking at 58 inches wide in 50 and a half inches long. Absolutely incredible. In terms of the clam tub, this is their best that clam has. The X series has the very best tubs that they make. It is a good quality, relatively thick plastic. I'm actually impressed with how heavy duty this tub feels and I really like the gray interior on it. In terms of the dimensions of this tub, we're looking at 14 inches tall. So it's a pretty tall tub, which I like to get that extra depth. 42 inches wide and 56 inches long. So you're gonna be able to keep a lot of stuff in inside of this tub. It is the biggest tub that we're looking at today between the three shacks. The Otter Tub is the toughest of the bunch. They have their roto molded tubs, really heavy duty. This thing's lasted three years out on the ice. You can see I've thrown a couple compartments in there. Those we will not count towards this review, uh, but it is super heavy duty. You'll notice they have roto molded in, a cup holder up front, a little accessory pocket and an accessory pocket and an accessory pocket on the other side as well. That's a nice added feature that none of the other shacks have. In terms of the size of the sled, we're looking at the smallest sled size out of the three. We're sitting at 10 inches tall, 38 and a half inches wide in the front, 31 and a half inches wide in the back, and it's a total of 56 inches long. In terms of the tub here on the Eskimo, you've got a decent quality black tub. I would not say it's cheap by any means, but it is the least durable, I would say, in, in terms of thickness and quality of build out of the three, but it should still hand up pretty well. In terms of dimensions of the tub, from a height perspective, we're sitting at nine inches tall, which that's gonna give us our shortest overall height. So width-wise, we're looking at a total of 36 inches and 52 inches long from the front to the back. The overall weight of the clam shack from the manufacturer is 88 pounds. This is the heaviest of the three shacks. The Otter Hideout is also the lightest of the bunch coming in from the factory at only 59 pounds.
As for weight of this Eskimo Shack, we're looking at 65 pounds, which throws it right in the middle. One of my favorite features of the Shack is the fabric. This is the best fabric and insulation thermal value that we're gonna see out of any of the Shacks that we're comparing today. You can see here, it's a stitched fabric. It's got an interior and an exterior lining and it has insulation inside of it. I wish you could feel this. You can actually feel the insulation inside of these little hexagon. It is a fully insulated 900 denier with 90 grams of insulation per square meter. Again, the best insulation in fabric out of the three shacks that we're gonna look at today with a black interior. In terms of the fabric on the Otter XT hideout, we are looking at that middle of the road between the three. 600 denier fabric, it is a insulated fabric. This is a really good fabric on this guy. One of the things that I do like about the fabric is that on the outside, it is the flat exterior. In the inside is where you've got the stitching of the insulation to the inside. What that allows for is no air holes, no light coming through each of these stitch points. And as we can see, a light gray interior in the otter. As for fabric quality and insulation value, this is their IQ insulated fabric. The IQ stands for insulated quilted. The pattern that you're gonna see on here, that checkered pattern, that's the quilting. In the I, the insulated, is because it has some form of insulation in between here. I will say this, it does feel thinner than the Otter by just a little bit, and significantly thinner than the clam. Interior color, as we can tell, is the light gray in this shack. In terms of vents, it has two of the side air vents here, which are nice. They have a little bit of a thicker edge to them here. It almost feels like there's a plastic in it, which allows this to stay open, even even in the wind, it doesn't want to shut, uh, which allows a little bit of airflow underneath it. And these vents are on both sides of the shaft. On the inside, you can see these vents are labeled with a little air logo here. They've got a pull tab up top. You can pull that down and boom, you've got a little bit of an air vent. The Otter does have two vents, one on each side above the window, below the reflector and above the branding. You can see it's stitched in here. Same exact thing on the other side. And then on the inside, you've got a nice flap that's easy to grab onto, Velcroed. The other side is exactly the same. As for vents, we do have that one vent on the top back here, but you do have a it's, it's kind of similar to the clam where you've got like, it's like a plastic in here or something that's intended to help keep it open. The concern that I would have is if you want the vent open and you get snow on it, you're gonna have to be coming out and beating it off and trying to keep this thing open. From the inside, the way that you can see the vent here is this big flap up top above your head. Open it up. It is huge in terms of the space that you have there and you can see outside. This thing's gonna do some really good venting um, if you have it open and you don't have anything pushing down on top of it. In terms of windows, you've got four of them in this shack, which is tied the most with the Otter. You've got one on the right hand side, you've got one on the left hand side, you've got a back window, and then you've got a front window as well. These are all sewn in windows. These are not Velcro windows. You can see in terms of window coverings, you do have the flaps that can go up. These flaps just Velcro on the top. There's a piece of Velcro in each corner. They do a really good job blocking the light out from outside. As for windows in the shack, you've got one nice big window in the front. You've got one on the left and one on the right as you're sitting here. And then one nice long wide one in the back. These are stitched in windows. They are not Velcro windows, so they're not replaceable. But again, I've had these for three years, haven't had a single issue with them. In terms of flaps to close up the windows, you do have these insulated flaps that just like with the clam, you can flap up. You've got Velcro, it matches the interior color and matches the exterior color. Does a really nice job blocking out the light. Eskimo windows. So we've got the front window here that you can see. I do like the width to it and I like how it kind of points down. It's kind of cool to look at. On the sides here, you do have these panoramic windows, which I really like. And then on the right hand side, you've got that panoramic window as well. There is no window back here. I don't know why there's no window. Hopefully in future models of this, they throw a window back here. Two other points I want to cover on the windows of the Eskimo. Number one, they are Velcro. The other thing that's unique about these windows is you have three pieces of Velcro and then you have zippers on the sides. So you can zip the windows up 
As for the zippers, these appear to be incredibly heavy duty zippers. However, they are not labeled, so I don't know what brand they are. You do have the top zipper for the front door, and then you have another zipper as well. And you have a zipper handle on the outside, and on the inside of the shack, you've got a zipper as well. So you can open it from both sides with that zipper. And then you have this heavy duty fabric, clam branded zipper pulls on each of them. This is probably the best type of zipper pull that I've seen out there so far. As for zippers on the Otter, these are SBS zippers. You've got your two ties on the top, and then you've got another zipper that you can use down on the bottom if you wanna be able to have your door open or shut any variation that you want. As for zippers on the Eskimo, they are using heavy duty YKK zippers. YKK zippers are known as some of the best in the industry. Um, you've got the zipper pull on the outside and on the inside, you have a top and a bottom, so you can adjust it exactly how you want. I don't expect you to have any issues with the zippers on any of these three shacks based off of what I'm looking at here. As for pockets in the shack, this one has the most options, which I really like. On each side, you've got a mesh pocket. It's a pretty light duty mesh. You have one of those on each side. Underneath the seat, you've got a little bit of a pocket. This model also comes with this little pouch on the side. I don't know what's supposed to go in it. And then on the ceiling of the shack, you've got this little hammock that is stitched in right above this front bar. As for pockets in the Otter, there's one pocket inside of here for storage. The mesh on this is a really thick, high quality black mesh. Really nice pocket, nice size to it. I just wish that they maybe put one on the other side. There is no storage on the top that they have built in, but you can get hammocks and other accessories for the shacks. As for pockets, you can see you've got a pocket on the Eskimo on the left and on the right of where you sit. Uh, these pockets are a lighter duty mesh pocket, so not as heavy duty as the Otter. There is no hammock or anything up top, and there is nothing under the seat for storage. As for the quality of the poles in this, this actually has the biggest, heaviest duty poles out of the three shacks, which is really important to me. What you're gonna notice here is these are one and a quarter inch round poles. And it does come with the rapid pull dream slide system. All you need to do is pull it out to collapse it and push it up, boom, it clicks into place. And that's what's giving you that full XD front door height. In terms of spreader poles, you do have one spreader pole that comes with it. It goes directly into the back of the tub, like the others that you've probably seen in flip overs before. You've got a hole in the tub, it goes in, it's extendable right there, and then it clamps right to that back pole. There is space for another pole up here and another pole in the front. As for the frame structure on this, the poles on this are a 13 16th inch square tube frame. The square tube frame from Otter is known to be a leader in the industry for durability. One thing I really do like about this Otter for the spreader poles is they come with three. So you've got one that goes up over the back, there's one that goes over the top, and then there's one that will be across the front as well for you. So you have stability and supported pole structure all the way across in terms of the adjustable poles. One thing you'll notice looking at the poles from the outside is this is a true flip over system. So you've got a pole that goes up towards the back with an adjustable pole that goes down. You've got your pole that goes up to the front edge with an adjustable pole that goes across. And then you've got your pole that goes down here. None of these poles extend. Part of the reason why it's the smallest shack, but it's a true flip back, flip up. If you want the adjustable wind poles in, go ahead and put them in. But a lot of times you don't even need them. This is the quickest to set up, quickest to tear down, and the easiest in terms of getting the pole system all ready to go. As for the pole in frame system in here, You've got really heavy duty hinge points. I'm actually incredibly impressed with these. The poles though, leave something to be desired. These are the thinnest, lightest duty poles out of the bunch. These are seven eighths inch round poles. They've got the angle out for the front and then that goes up to the front and then you've got an extension here. All right, Eskimo spreader poles. On the Eskimo, they give you one. This Eskimo spreader pole is intended to be used in the front of the shack. One thing that I'm not a huge fan of is Eskimo has advertised on their website. They have listed that it has a feature called the windbreak mode. The windbreak mode on the other one man that they have is where it actually clicks in and sits up like this. Here's the problem. They didn't actually set it up the way that they have their other shaft where they've got a pin that actually holds this up like this. So if I let go, it's gonna fall back. That's why they give you a spreader pole. The spreader pole is intended to hook to the front of the shaft to that second pole back there. So when that pole goes down, this sits up a little bit like this. All right, so here it is. If you're excited about the wind block mode, 
code I will show you. This is how it works on this shack, but this is how it works. You've got, you can tell here, this pole slides into this pole, which allows you to have that extendable front on, on it. You can see here, if I was to flip this shack back open, now the issue that I have is a pole right in the middle of the shack. So I'd have to take it down, put it back, put it off to the side, and then put it back up if I wanted to use the windbreak mode. The one thing that I will say is this pole is not set up in a way to actually be able to use it in the back. So if you wanted to use it to support the back, you can't. I'm sure you could jimmy rig something by putting a hole in there and being able to hold the back up. That's usually what collapses first if you get too much weight on the top of the shack. In terms of the seat, this is the best seat out of the three that we're gonna see. This is their deluxe padded seat. It is really cushiony on it. Um, it kind of reminds me of the Pro Series from the Otter seats, if you've ever sat on those. This one's actually a little bit more padded, and it's got a much more padded backrest to it, which I really like. Um, you can see it just straps on, so you could replace the pad if anything happens to it, and it is the foldable back on it as well. It is a super comfortable seat. One of the other great things about this seat that makes it stand out from all the others, not only the comfortability of it, but it also is four-way adjustable. So if you want to be coming forward, you can slide it forward, you can slide it back, and if you want to go to the right, you can go to the right, and you can go to the left if you want to as well. This gives you full adjustability of the seat. In terms of seat height, we've got a total of 22 inches from the ice or the floor to the top of the bottom of the seat, which is the tallest out of the three. As for the seat in the Otter, this is a fairly nice seat. It's a swiv swivel chair. It is mesh. Uh, the mesh is actually not too bad on it. I, I like it. It's worked well for me, but it is not the best. It's probably the least in terms of customizability between the three. It does fold down, so you have that ability to fold it down. You can fold it up and you can swivel it. That's all that you can do with it. So on the bottom of the chair is just this peg here. That goes directly into this post right here, which you can pull out. In that way, you've got a pocket there. You can see there's no adjustability for left or right, forward or back. It's in a fixed position, but doesn't take up any tub space when it's in use. In terms of seat height, we've got 19 inches from the floor of the ice to the bottom of the chair seat. The seat in the Eskimo. So this is a pretty nice seat. It is a little bit more adjustable than the one in the Otter, but not as good as the Clam. So you've got the mesh bottom seat, you've got the mesh back. The one thing that's nice about this is it does have a backing on it. So it's not gonna be super windy and breathable and cold like maybe the Otter would be, but again, you are inside, so probably not that big of an issue. Um, it's pretty heavy duty and durable. You can spin the chair, it does fold down. You can lift it up so that you can get below it there and it does slide side to side on that back bar. One thing to note, unlike the others where it's easy to take out the chair if you want to, you can still do it on this one, but it's a little bit more involved. What you need to do is on each side is there's a pin. There's a pin here and there's a cap here. There's a pin here and a cap here. You would have to undo the pin on both sides. You would then have to take the caps off and then you can slide the pole out, slide this off. So it's not intended to be taken off very frequently, but you can do it if you want to. In terms of seat height, we've got 18 inches from the floor ice to the bottom of the chair. In terms of the warranty on this shack, you're looking at a three-year warranty, which is the best warranty out of the bunch. The Otter XT Hideout has a one-year warranty. The Eskimo Shack has a one-year warranty. In the clan, the unique feature that I wanna call out here is the extra height in the front. Unlike the other shacks, you've got much more height because of these extendable front poles. You can actually stand up in it. You've got a full-size door, and you're gonna be able to walk around and get around in the shack much better than any of the other ones. As you can see, I can stand in the shack due to the extra height in it. This is the only one that I can stand in. I'm 5'11", and if I get as close to the front door as I can, you can see I've probably got a good four inches above my head before I even hit it. I can walk all the way back to just before the middle bar, before my head starts barely touching the top. Now, if I was to get another one of the extendable poles, you can see I can hold this up a lot better if it's more taut, but I don't have that big of a deal of an issue with it, with my head brushing the top just a little bit as I get close to the seat, because normally I would be then going and sitting down. 
As for unique features, the Otter Hideout has the true one flip design, which is unique to them. They don't have an extendable width pole up here. They don't have extendable extra height door poles up here. There is that trade off of you don't have the extra width or the extra height. However, you can truly flip it back, flip it forward, and you're done with it. The other unique feature is that the sled has that small footprint in the back, fans out in the front, so that way you've got more fishable space even though you have a smaller tub. One of the other unique features of the hideout that the other ones don't have is the skirt. The skirt goes across where your legs go down to help keep that draft out. The others just have the tub. In terms of the unique features of the shack, this extendable front pole for the extra width is the number one most unique feature on it. And then also these zippered windows where you can zipper them up to keep everything out in terms of light sneaking around it. It's a very unique shack. You've got the most fishable square space in it because of that unique feature of the extendable pole in the front. In terms of accessories, one of the reasons why the price point on this guy is so much higher is because it does come with a ceiling mounted light bar. As you'll see, this middle bar has LED lights all the way across it. I've got a different light hooked up to it right now, so go ahead and just ignore that. But you've got LED lights all across that bar, which I like because it's integrated in. It's not another thing that's clipped on. You can buy additional accessory bars for the back and for the front like I did. So that way you don't have to hang any lights in here other than the ones that are integrated into the poles. It comes with the middle one already taken care of for you. You also get the battery holder bracket here. So this is already gonna be included in it. You have to put your own battery in it but that battery bracket is included. And then it comes with the travel cover, all included in the price. As for accessories on the Otter, you can get just about anything you want with it, but to make it comparable to the clam, you would need to purchase that LED light system or a clam light system like what they have. They don't give you anything inside of this shack in this package deal, which is why the price point is the way that it is. So figure in $60 for that to make it comparable to the clam. You also don't have a battery holder that comes with this, but you can purchase that separately for $14.99. And the travel cover for it, you can purchase separately as well for $69.99. As for the accessories on this guy to make it comparable in price-wise to the clam, uh, it does not come with a light bar in it or a light stick at all. You can absolutely buy the same one that the clam has. That's $60 you'd have to add on to the price. Battery holder is not included could add that on for $25. And then in terms of the cover, it does not come with one of those and you can add that on for $70. So what are my overall thoughts on the shacks and which one am I gonna use this year? Let's start with the Eskimo. The Eskimo has the widest fishable area in the front that is gonna be really important for anybody that's using live scope with a camera, multiple holes, tons of stuff that they wanna have in their shack. That could be the deal breaker for them. I really like that about that Eskimo shack. I also like the zippered up thermal insulated windows on that shack. That is really nice as well. I'm a little bit let down by that windbreak mode. I don't like that it's not as tall in there as I thought it would be. And the pole design isn't the best. I think that they could have done a better job using heavier duty poles, but overall, all together, I think that could be a really good shack for those guys that want that extra fishable square space. The Eskimo also is the most compact when collapsed and it glides the best across the snow, which is a huge thing for those of you pulling my hand. Now the clam. The clam is the tallest shack. I can stand up in it, I can stretch out. I really like that about the shack. I think that's a key differentiator for that shack. I also like the heavy duty poles. They have the heaviest duty poles out of the three of them. That huge tub, you can fit a ton of stuff in that tub. It's the tallest tub. I love the light gray interior of the tub. I also like the way that they do the integrated light bars inside of the shack. The clam shack also has the highest in your fabric, the best insulation on it as well, which I really like. Like. It is a heavy shack though. So if you're looking to pull by hand, I would not choose that shack. If you're looking for just a one man shack, just for early ice and late ice, I probably wouldn't use that one. If you're looking for an all around, all season shack, and you're not gonna miss not having a two man shack, that would be the one that I would go with for you. If you've got a wheeler or a snowmobile or a truck that you're gonna be pulling it with throughout the season, that's a good shack for you because of that extra weight with it. It's not gonna be fun loading all the time by yourself or pulling by hand. The Otter XT hideout. The Otter has the best tub in the industry. That roto molded tub can't be beat by anyone. I love the roto molded in accessory pockets, the cup holder. 
It's a great design. It is the true one man flip over running gun shack of choice for me. If I was to have a single one man shack that I only use for lightweight in the early season, lightweight at the end of the season, but it needed to take a beating, that would be the shack that I would go with because of the durability of that tub. It's got a great pole system in it as well. It's not super big, it's not tall, it's not super spacious, but it's that true flip back flip over design. No extending poles, no hassle with any of it. I do also like the adjustable poles that come with it. So if you're in some crazy winds like I have been in the last three years in that shack, you throw all three of those holes up, your shack's not flipping back, it's not flipping forward, it's not moving around, it is incredibly stable. The Otter Shack is also the lightest weight out of the bunch. So which one do I choose that I'm gonna go with this year? I'm going with the clam. I really like the extra height in the clam, all the things that I just went through. The clam is gonna be my shack of choice this year. I'm trying to see if I can use my one man more instead of having to go to a two man in mid season. I like the idea of having that extra space in there for my camera equipment in the height for that, being able to stand up in there, the extra depth of the sled. The clam is the one that I'm going with this year. I got a ton more videos coming out. I'm gonna do some mods on that clam that you guys are gonna see coming soon. Check out this other video on the channel where you can see exactly what I did to that Otter XT hideout over the last three years of using it to make it truly unique all on its own. And until next time, take it easy.